Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Super Coach Insider podcast. My name is Swizz, here to talk Gather Round Friday Night Review. Before we get into that, as always, continue to check us out on all our social media platforms, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, Super Coach Insider 100 or Swizz 26. Thank you to our sponsor, Splash Vodka, for all their ongoing support. Two games yesterday, footy first, back at suburban grounds, Norwood, Fremantle, Gold Coast. Fantastic to see the ground absolutely packed out. I know people are critical about, uh, you know, it wasn't actually that big of a crowd, but I always prefer 100% capacity or close to, and that's what we got with that game. Fremantle, Gold Coast, unless I guess Fremantle were flying and, you know, all their fans turned up at home. But if it was normally a Gold Coast, Fremantle game at Metricon, you wouldn't see, a, uh, you know, a packed capacity. So, Fantastic to see, and I think there probably should be more of it, especially when you've got um, games where involving probably Gold Coast and GWS. I've always been big on, say, the Giants maybe taking a game or two down to Wagga or the Riverina or Albury or something like that, because I think that would be fantastic, especially for the local people there. Uh, and that just proved again last night. And on top of that, it was such a great game of footy. Fremantle start got the jump early. Gold Coast absolutely dominated the middle part of the game, and then Fremantle, who we're meant to be kicking against the wind in the last quarter. Uh, finished really strong, kicking uh, the four goals uh, and, and just ran over the top. But it wasn't just the four goals, it's the seven of the last nine. They got those three quick goals just before three-quarter time and ran all over the sun. So fantastic game of footy, uh, led by Fremantle. They, they had some really good contributors, especially from a super coach perspective. The big one, Sean Darcy, uh, the 136 super coach had 48 hit outs. We, we knew he was going to go really well up against Ned Moyle. Um, a few people still kicking themselves for trading uh, Darcy three weeks ago. Uh, since then, he has been absolutely on fire. Uh, so he yeah, got around the ground. Ne- nearly could have been a lot worse because he, ke- he missed a goal uh, quite late in the match. I think it was about the 25-minute mark. Uh, so that could have really pumped his score up to about a 150. But yeah, he, he's just looked fantastic, and I'm trying to think what what it was. I think it was about a 40. Um, I actually do have his scores in front of me. 41 um, after round two against North Melbourne, where people were getting uh, trigger figures and want tri- trigger finger and wanted to trade him out. And then he's gone 132, 125, and now the big 136. So sometimes we always talk about maybe holding premiums. I know. There was a lot of discussion at the time because of you know Darcy Cameron and and Tim English and they were, the Tim English moves worked out really well. But um, I think talking to Abdul, he was saying yeah that money that he saved by trading down Darcy did help him make other moves. So if that that's always the big thing we've said with premiums, it, what are you going to do with that extra cash? That's one example because I think that helped him get in LDU at the time. Uh, so yeah, only ever trade premiums if that cash is going to help you. And those who have stuck fat, well done, because he is absolutely on fire. Uh, Caleb Sarong's one that's gone under the radar. Uh, 536 going into the game, break even of 62, and absolutely smashed at 146. We did talk about Fremantle's cruisy draw to start the year. We all thought it'd be Brayshaw, but Sarong has been flying. Um, just had the 70 in that first game, but the 101, 146, and 100, and now the 146. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he continues, but the 37 position, six tackles, best player on the ground yesterday, uh, couldn't fault him. Hayden Young was back in a bit of that form, but it's only a 90, Ryan 93, this is what we've always talked about, Fremantle, Cox 93, um, they're <clears throat> back line by committee, um, so sometimes it's somebody that jumps out, but they're always around that 90 to 100, 105, sometimes in Ryan's case. Uh, Jordan Clark was a little bit down last night, but that, that's Fremantle in a nutshell with that back line. Uh, a notable rookie last night was Matty Johnson. Uh, had the 15 touches, kicked a big goal, 67. Somebody to look about um, going forward. Uh, and if we've got it here, oh, Jesus, I'm scrolling through. Matt Johnson, it was... Um, just, so that was technically his third game, but he's had 24 and 14, but they've both been sub-affected. Uh, we'll talk about somebody in a similar position later, but so he had the break even of 33 last night. Uh, that'll equate to about a rise of about 14,000. So he'll be about at 137, uh, next week, give or take. So definitely somebody to look at, uh, potentially it's hard with these rookies this year because some are starting a sub, some, uh, you know, getting taken off as subs, but, uh, you know, he did look comfortable in that midfield. 
Uh, but they've been like, you know, favoring um, Brody actually as emergency or sub a little bit more recently, which has been a bit of a surprise. So that'll be one to watch teams next week to see sort of where Johnson lines up and how that goes going forward. Um, but yeah, definitely an interesting one. A lot of people moved early on Wagner, did get 12 possessions, kicked the ball every time, which is always a good thing on Supercoach. The only problem is he absolutely butchered it, uh, butchered it early in two, which is always crucial for Supercoach because you want to be on, on fire early and um, that was not the case. So he's, uh, I think he had the, yeah, the six clangers there, 58% targets hit. Um, so not not great. But at least you can think, well, he he does have the ability to get the ball. He likes to kick the ball. And if he can, you know, clean that up, that's uh, that's definitely going to be a positive. So, But only the 39 super coach. That could have easily been a 60 super coach game. Uh, Sturt also a little bit underwhelming there. Played a little bit up the ground, up forward. Had the uh, just the six touches. So another one that we were hoping preseason that'd be all right. And unfortunately, that didn't probably pan out. But maybe a second game gets into it a little bit more next week. So still one to watch. Um, Andy Brayshaw has been really down recently. Only the 77. So that's been a really disappointing pickup. Hopefully he can turn it around and be a um, point of difference come mid-year. Uh, I was really annoyed. Sam Sulkowski had him in a couple of draft stars and got subbed early. Always the case. Lockie Shields, on the other hand, fantastic. I, I did mention him a couple of weeks ago about uh, if you are liking to um, your forward line in Supercoach drafts, uh, a bit by committee there and, and, and you know, Swap, swapping around that F4, F5 and thought Shields and Swarkowski are, are two good options and yeah, Shields 124 so that was pretty good for at least one of my draft sides there uh, Gold Coast on the flip side David Swallow played fantastic kick three, should have kicked four yeah, 113, uh, Lukos just continued to go do what he does but the big one was the midfield Anderson, Took and Rowley, in particular Took you know, his absolute was flying up till half time, did slow down a little bit in the second half but still had the 26 touches the 8 tackles um, you know, really been going very well this season, I think it's a little bit underrated what he's done coming off that hamstring pre-season, I know he's a big favourite of a lot of people, um, has dropped the, the 36k going into that game but did get his break even, although his break even was 128, so yeah, one point under. So um, that might actually flatten him out now. Uh, so he's gone 113, 106, 109, 122. So hasn't been setting the world on fire, but has been extremely steady. steady. Uh, North and Richmond, their next two games, um, and then West Coast a couple of weeks after that. So it might be the time to get him. I've only ended up doing the one trade so far because maybe a view that, uh, you know, have a look at a couple of players but yeah took is very um well in my mind for my trade plans going forward so depending on who sort of picks up dual position and maybe a couple of these rookies what i might do but the um the obvious trade for me was going to be hopper to somebody but we'll talk about him in a moment but they took definitely needs to be um you know front of mind for everybody because uh, he looks really good. Uh, Benny Long didn't have a great night, just the nine touches. That could be really good for Charlie Constable. Uh, so maybe watch that, and hopefully those have held Constable, because he has been absolutely dominating in the seconds. Um, outside of that, there wasn't a lot to talk about the Suns. You know, Ned Moyle, even if it's wits out for a few weeks, it's only the 35. So, you know, even as a rookie, you know, Ruck, who might come onto our R3, it's not going to be great, you know, in a perfect world, he could have got another 60 or 70 and, yeah, been somebody we could have looked at. Uh, maybe if those who had Madden or Radagalia at R3 could have moved him forward and Moy could have made some cash like we've had some of those rookie rucks over the last couple of years. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So, yeah, probably a disappointing night for the Suns there. They probably should have won that game. But, yeah, well done to Freo for running all over them and, and getting the result. All right, the next game is my boys. Unfortunately, didn't get the job done against the uh, Swannies, who you know, is exactly probably what I thought was going to happen. Um, I was probably a bit surprised how competitive we were. Uh, I know everybody's saying the Swans had less experience than younger players, but um, I think our numbers are probably you know skewed a little bit. I think we had nine players under 20 games, but yeah, they, we had a lot of experienced guys, but when you've got Jack and Koch and... You know, near pretty well in their last year of footy. That's always going to bump up your uh, your games played number. But in saying that, the Swans did have a few, quite a few outs, uh, and, and it showed with both teams not having a centre half forward. 
Uh, you know, the, both teams were just zoning off and taking intercept marks all night and, and you know, not having over the Lynch or your buddies, um, you know, leading up. Uh, may, it made the game just be played between the two arcs. So that, that's exactly what ended up going on. And, and the Swans absolutely ran over Richmond uh, in the end. They were, they were arm's length all night. Richmond came back, got within, I'm pretty sure we got within a kick in that last quarter or close to. And then, um, yeah, it was pretty well the Papley show after that. So we'll start off with the Swannies because they were the much better team. Um, Nick Blakely, awesome, 151. And pretty well much what was happening was Richmond would bomb the ball where Lynch would normally be and Blakely was just zoning off and taking marks all night. So, yeah, fantastic game. Had the... Um, what do you have the 30 30 touches five marks it was just everywhere so yeah no the brilliant game of footy jake lloyd uh you know seagulling at his best but he, he does look back kind of nearly into premium status he's his numbers have been this year have been really fantastic um and it has to be like food for thought now is that maybe d6 option uh so he had a break even of 85 probably going to go up maybe oh, 15 to 17k so it'd be about 535 um he's gone this year 100 102 93 120 and now has pulled out a 119 so very consistent from lloyd i know a little bit on the burn list for some people for for last year like um but he's been a premium for a long time uh, i thought chad warner absolutely dominated that game but he, he did butcher the ball 53 percent by target so um, 26 touches, it's always going to hurt you in super coach, but he he was brilliant. Tom Patley kicked six goals in the second half, you know, the 140 super coach. The more interesting one there was everybody's favourite or most frustrating forward, Isaac Heaney, break even of 140, and he got there 144. Um, yeah, he was one of the few forwards that looked like a lead-up option, and, and Richmond didn't have any answers. Seven tackles also really helped boost his score. So, no, brilliant, brilliant night there from Isaac. Um, I probably now don't recommend it because with Sydney next week, they actually played Geelong away. So that'll be very interesting to see how they go up against there. And that's typical Isaac Heaney. Everybody looks at him and goes, yes, we're going to get this guy cheap. He's 458. He's just put out the 144. We're all want him in our sides. And then he probably comes out next week and scores a 60. So it very, can be very frustrating like that. And just the role he plays, you know, up forward if he was playing more midfield time yeah he'd be an absolute lock again uh, mills was awesome early and then slowed down 97 uh Goulden, f- which a lot of people own 88 um but he he only went at 60 percent efficiency so he was getting inside the you know getting cbas he missed an important goal um so yeah he could have very easily been 100 110 game was playing like that but yeah unfortunately missing some targets there really hurt him the uh, big one there is, uh, and I'm actually trying to look for him, Matty Roberts, 93 super coach. And I was talking to, a, I forget who I was talking online, but somebody was actually looking at bringing him in instead of JVR. And I thought, yeah, well done to them. The problem was he had a break even of 49, and that's because he'd been starting sub. Uh, so he's 27, 10, and 4 so far this year. So, and then he's come out, finally get to start a full game, and he shows us what he can do with that 93. The 14 touches uh, was really good efficiency, 92%. Uh, so that'll put him uh, with that huge break, even of 49 for a rookie. Um, that'll put him up to about 130, oh, I'm going to say about 130, 135, somewhere in that kind of mark. Um, uh, which is going to be, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a not a bad price. The only problem is, as we've said, with Swans having so many players out, does he get pushed back at some point as a sub? Um, and then, yeah, the you know, Geelong, Collingwood coming up for them, a couple of tougher games for the Swans. So it's definitely something to look at, especially because that four, it's going to cycle out soon. So if he can put up another, if he can start next week and put up another 60 to 70, yeah, he's got the potential to make some good cash. Um, and it's a tough one at the moment because we are, we are struggling with good rookies who are making money. Uh, the Braden Campbell, uh, so yeah, it was there, 105. I did mention him in the pod about if you do have super coach keeper leagues, definitely pick him up because he was available in quite a few that I was scrolling through. Um, and 105 picked a really massive goal late. But yeah, it's another one of those sort of halfback guys that, um, could zone off and that, but he he is kind of the heir apparent to um to Lloyd down there, so definitely somebody to 
keep an eye on for future years. Uh, Ollie Florent was down for 50, so unfortunate for those people brought him there. A lot of people had brought in Amati over the last couple of weeks. 33 started out on a house on fire, kicked two early goals, looked fantastic, and then did the hamstring. So unfortunately, that's going to be a trade out for people. And then the two debutants, Corey uh, Warner, who was the who is the brother of Chad. Um, kicked a really nice goal, did some nice things, but 37 is probably not going to cut it for what we're looking for to bring it into our teams. The big one, the sub, the for, <laughs> the forgotten man of super coach. Uh, we've all wanted him. The I think a lot of people were going with the man, the myth, the legend. Will Gould got on when Marty um, got in, got injured. Was pretty well got to 16 in no time. Uh, so he played in a defensive role. So had the nine touches. Did some really nice things. We've we've been saying this for a long time that. Um, just play him horse, get him in there. But the problem is with the Swans, uh, do both McCartans come back? Definitely um, Tom will be back next week. Uh, Rampy was close to playing, uh, so you'll probably find Gould will be straight back out of that side, which is which is a shame because I think for a full game, um, he definitely could have been an option finally for us, but that's just unfortunately the way it goes. And then onto my boys, uh, Liam Baker. I know he was a, a bit of a favourite a few weeks ago for for people that were looking at that defensive forward option, um, and it's probably nearly Richmond's best player at the moment. Uh, so yeah, he'd gone up like thirty five k. He's gone up seventy k for the season, break even of sixty. Uh, so yeah, he continues to go up there. That's probably going to be about another twenty five k rise. But people more looking at the premium and. After round one, where it was only 63, he's gone 118, 143, 83, and 113. So well done to those people who have been on him. It's looking fantastic. 35 touches, just gets around the ball. Um, yeah, it's uh, it did help with no sort of short there. But yeah, I think he, he's a pretty solid player anyway. I'm actually a bit surprised how well he actually is going. But um, a few people comparing him to Shane Edwards, which is probably fair, like... Um, or was that sort of the forgotten midfielder during Richmond's premiership reign and that and how good he actually is and Baker's a bit the same like that so just goes in does his job looks great um, Dan Riola didn't probably have his greatest night and he still got 101 got involved really in that third quarter when Richmond started coming back but his first half wasn't great um, but yeah was still able to have an impact on the game and get the 101 uh, the big two the Richmond big uh, midfielders Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper Taranto still can't kick a goal for us, but yeah, 115 was in everything. 34 touches, um, clearances, contested possessions, whatever you we needed last night, he was there. Didn't butcher the ball as much, only the three, but still went at 67%. Um, I still say there's going to be one game where he's going to kick five, have you know 40 touches and actually have a good disposal efficiency. Probably will get a 200 for us at some point, um, either this year or next year. But uh, yeah, I can see that, that happening, but... Yeah, typical Timmy Taranto, 115. Um, Hopper's the big one. I was talking to Heath Shaw about this on Thursday night. He actually says he's the you know the better player. Um, just very skillful, but doesn't uh, get probably the recognition because he's always had the injuries and just doesn't get a fair run at it. Uh, but yeah, we got, we've got to sort of see what he can do. 32 touches. There's an absolute ball in there. Um, 13 contested possessions, five clearances. The five clangers, which kind of hurt, uh, but still managed to put the 115. So that has changed a few plans. I know quite a few people were trading out um, Hopper because he was the obvious one with some cash um, if you were trying to get up to a premium or people trying to get in Dawson and that. Uh, but the break even of 15, I'm so glad I kind of I had the, had him traded out and did the reverse because I was looking at you know potentially bringing Stuart or Jezza for him. Uh, but yeah, that all. Um, 100 points over his break even so roughly that'll be about 45,000 he'll go up so that'll put him about 420 um oh so 410 and his break even will still be very very good so um one that we'll be able to keep holding um so that's beautiful for the for people who are owning him um Ben Miller was the main ruck guy he was sort of sharing it with Samson Ryan but he was the first ruck uh, 77 uh, Samson Ryan who have quite a few people brought in was really solid early but he just dropped some easy marks um, so that 56 could have very easily been a 70 or an 80 um, so it was a very near game but at least he's getting in the right position so that is one real positive for owners um, so that was pretty solid uh, Tyler Young well done to those people especially who got him in last week 
Uh, so 62, you know, he's going to continue to make more cash for you. And pretty solid. Like, he's actually traveling better than your Cowans and, and Wilmots at the moment. You know, it's back-to-back 60s. Uh, probably slowed in that second half. But, yeah, at the first half, he you know, he took two intercept marks and was also getting into some good positions where, you know, from a defensive point of view. And they have the faith also into it for him, um, you know, to switch that ball. And that's where he's got the six marks. So you, you sometimes see... Um, ball switch and they'll kick over somebody's head because you know the players for whatever reason might not have faith in that particular player some usually young players but yeah Tyler Young they definitely have a lot of confidence on him so the 140k he was in going to that game and he, he's going to be pretty solid uh, Juddy Clark was really slow to start last night as well and then uh, like a lot of the Richmond players and then there's you know they closed into the game they, some of these young players listed, lifted, but then obviously faded in the last quarter. So, yeah, 64, but that he's naturally at that higher price of 196. So you'd be hoping if you brought him in, Juddy's probably scoring in that 80s. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, there wasn't a huge amount to talk to about Richmond. So it'd be interesting to see how they go going forward. Uh, they're playing the Ds next week, and I think probably Melbourne will do a, a bit of a number on Richmond. So, um uh, it might be kind of similar, the, the same ones, Taranto and Hopper continue to do their job. It'll just be interesting to see sort of how Young and Ryan go up against those sort of bigger bodies again. But yeah, so that is the Friday night recap. Um, look forward to Ben. I think Ben will be doing the Saturday games this week. Um, hopefully, if you've um, already locked in your vice captain with Dawson or Laird, um, if you don't, naturally some massive games uh, today the big one being um, Melbourne and Essendon a lot of people who have Clary that's that's the best option as captain North Melbourne Brisbane beforehand so yeah if you do have your Neils, LDUs, uh, Dunkleys and you haven't used your VC it's probably the safest option VC for one of them straight into the Oliver game uh, so that that's probably your best bet there is meant to be a lot of rain coming through in Adelaide now what time that actually hits uh, unsure but yeah definitely check out that and what what's that weather report because that could affect especially for JVR and that's been the big discussion um, on especially Twitter uh, yeah how sort of not only with the Melbourne players coming back with Gorn and Lever but how will those weather um, conditions affect him so you know well, it's always a hard to get a read on because sometimes, you know, um, low scoring game because of the wet and somebody kicks a couple of goals and they get really boosted, more ruck contests. So as second ruck, does he get involved a lot more or does he have an off night because obviously the wet weather. So it's, uh, there's no right or wrong answer at the moment. We're only going to know until we, we face those face that, but it's just something to think about. Um, but yeah, no, Friday night footy, really good. And uh, hopefully Gather Round continues to impress Enjoy the day, guys, and we'll be back soon. Bye.